Hey there, fellow time travelers. DY Dajit, do you ever find yourself strolling down memory lane, reminiscing about the good old days when television had a certain charm and sci fi adventures had us glued to our screens? Well, today I've got a special treat for you, and it's a trip back to the year 1964. Do you remember sitting down with your family, perhaps in the glow of a tube TV, to watch Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea? Ah, those were the days, weren't they? The show that took us on a thrilling underwater journey with the sea view, a futuristic submarine, and its fearless crew. As you sip your coffee or tea, I invite you to share your cherished memories of this classic series. What were your favorite moments? Did you have a crush on one of the characters? Or maybe you tried to recreate some of their adventures in your own imaginative way. Let's dive deep into nostalgia together and celebrate the show that sparked our youthful imaginations. And now, without further ado, let me take you on a journey filled with fascinating random facts about Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Get ready for a dive into the depths of TV history. In 1964, a 66 card set of black and white trading cards was released by Donruss. These cards featured stills from the first season of the popular TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Back then, you could buy a pack of these cards for just five cents. Fast forward to today, and a set in mint condition can fetch several hundred dollars among collectors. It's a testament to the enduring appeal of this classic show. The series initially faced an interesting twist when David Hedison, who played the character Lee Crane, initially turned down the role. However, he had a change of heart when he learned that Richard Basehart was signed on to portray Admiral Nelson. The chemistry between these two actors became a cornerstone of the show's success. As Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea continued, it took a unique turn. In its final two seasons, the series embraced the trend of the late 1960s by incorporating paranormal storylines. Mummies, werewolves, talking puppets, and even an evil leprechaun became part of the Seaview's adventures. Alongside these fantastical creatures, the show introduced fossil men, flame men, frost men, lobster men, and shadow men. Despite their often cheesy, low-budget makeup effects and costume designs, these elements added an intriguing twist to the series, aligning it with the paranormal interests of the era. In summary, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea not only captivated audiences with its underwater adventures, but also found a way to adapt to the changing tastes of the late 1960s by venturing into the realm of the supernatural and those vintage trading cards. They've become prized collectibles worth more than their original five cent price tag. The 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea holds the distinction of being the longest running of all Irwin Allen produced science fiction series. It sailed through four seasons, setting off in 1964 and concluding in 1968. As for the props used in the show, they had quite the journey. Many of the props from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea found their way into other popular TV series of the time, such as Lost in Space, The Time Tunnel, Land of the Giants, and Batman. This recycling of props created a kind of interconnected universe of sci-fi television during that era. While the show had its fair share of successes, it also faced a tragic loss. Henry Kulke, who portrayed Chief Curly Jones and was chosen as a series regular, met an untimely end. In February 1965, he suffered a fatal heart attack, which not only cut short his role but also marked the end of his prolific career, which had seen him appear in over 100 features in television episodes. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea remains a notable piece of television history, known for its contribution to the sci-fi genre and its enduring impact on subsequent series. It navigated through the depths of the ocean and the heights of popularity, leaving its mark on the television landscape of the 1960s. In 1964, the TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea made waves with its season two opener, Jonah and the Whale. This episode marked a historic moment as it became the first in the series to be broadcast in color. The iconic Seaview submarine, central to the show's premise, underwent some changes. It was redesigned with just one set of observation windows and a hatch for the flying sub, departing from the earlier versions featuring three or six windows. New uniforms and the introduction of the flying sub added fresh elements to the show's dynamic. As the series progressed through seasons two to four, a total of six different models of the flying sub were used for filming, showcasing the dedication to maintaining the show's visual appeal 
and technical accuracy. The show's pilot episode, 11 Days to Zero, was initially filmed in color but aired in black and white. However, starting in 1993, the Sci-Fi Channel began airing the pilot in its original color format. This airing featured the original opening credits and, in some instances, the familiar theme music. Additionally, the Season 1, Volume 1 DVD release offers both versions of the pilot, the original black and white broadcast, and the color version with the original Season 2 opening credits. Intriguingly, the Seaview had a sister sub known as the Polydor, but its fate took a grim turn in only the second episode when it was destroyed, adding an unexpected twist to the series. Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea continues to be remembered not only for its thrilling underwater adventures, but also for these intriguing behind-the-scenes details that add depth to its history in television. In the 1964 TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, some interesting behind-the-scenes decisions shaped the show's course. One notable instance involves James Doohan, known for his iconic role as Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott on Star Trek. Doohan was initially offered the part of Chief Sharky in Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. However, he turned it down because that same week, he accepted the role of Scotty on Star Trek, a decision that would define his career. Consequently, Terry Becker took on the role of Chief Sharky in the series. Additionally, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea had a unique quirk during its fourth season. Not a single actress appeared in any episode during this entire season, whether in speaking roles, non-speaking roles, or even as voices. This departure from typical casting choices is an intriguing aspect of the show's history. Furthermore, Del Monroe had a notable dual role in both the Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea movie and the TV series. In the movie, he portrayed Seaman Kowski, while on TV, he played Seaman Kowalski, essentially portraying the same character with a slightly different name. These facts offer a glimpse into the casting and production decisions that influenced the iconic series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Each choice had its impact, contributing to the show's unique character and history. In 1964, the TV series Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea set sail on ABC. Initially, the show aimed for a serious tone, delving into Cold War themes and near-future speculative fiction in its first season. However, ABC requested a lighter touch for the second season, leading to a shift in plot lines. The second season saw an increase in Monster of the Week type episodes. Despite this change, some episodes still harken back to the series' original tone. One recurring quirk in the series involved the circuitry room. Whenever it was shown after an explosion or fire, the door was always unlocked, a detail that keen-eyed viewers couldn't help but notice. Perhaps one of the most well-known running jokes of the show was the Seaview Rock and Roll. In many episodes, characters would lurch in response to camera movements on the visibly static set, creating the illusion that the Seaview had sustained impact. This technique, borrowed from old movies, was used by other TV shows of the era, including Star Trek, but Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea took it to new heights, or rather, depths. And that's a glimpse into the quirks and changes that marked this iconic 1964 TV series. A voyage to the Bottom of the Sea navigated through different tones and tricks, leaving its mark on the era's television landscape. As we sail toward the conclusion of our journey through the depths of nostalgia, I invite you to reflect upon the timeless allure of the 1964 TV series, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. For many, it's not just a show, it's a portal to a bygone era of exploration, innovation, and adventure. In the midst of Cold War tensions and the uncharted mysteries of the ocean, this series took us on a thrilling voyage aboard the Seaview, a futuristic submarine unlike any other. Its crew, led by the indomitable Admiral Nelson and the resourceful Captain Crane, faced perils both human and supernatural. It ignited our imaginations, blending science fiction with the uncharted depths of our oceans, sparking a fascination that has lasted for generations. Perhaps you were captivated by the daring exploits of the crew, or maybe it was the futuristic technology that fired your imagination. Was it the memorable characters, the suspenseful plots, or the series' unique blend of science and fantasy that left an indelible mark on you? Now is the time to share your thoughts, your favorite moments, or the ways Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea has left an impression on your life. 
Your memories and insights are a testament to the enduring power of this classic series. Thank you for embarking on this journey through time and memory with us. Your presence and your stories enrich our collective appreciation for this iconic show. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and reminiscences as we continue to explore the boundless sea of nostalgia together. With gratitude for your time and interest.